So you're a performer that is, not only do you not do stand-up, uh, you do improv. I do long form improv. But the way- Have you, you ever seen a long form improv show? Yeah, yeah, I've seen you numerous times. Really? Yeah, I, I watched uh, all of your your specials. Oh, that's very kind with uh, Thomas. Yeah, who Have is- Have you ever been to uh, one of the live shows? I saw Thomas live twice. I've seen you live twice. That's amazing. Yeah. Is that Ben Schwartz and Friends? Or Shitty Jobs? I, it was at UCB. Yeah, I think it was before ben, ben Schwartz and Friends. Okay. That's um, very kind. That's awesome of you that you did any research and watched anything before us. Very nice. Here. This wasn't because you were coming on. Oh. I, I just, uh, I saw Thomas and Lauren do, uh, Lapkus do uh, their two, what do I say? Woman, man show? I don't know if they've ever done a two person show. Okay. Um, I was just saying two man show. Okay. And uh, I never knew Thomas before. Similar to how I walked into Crimson Tide. Oh, okay. Keep going. Keep going to Crimson Tide. Keep going. We're now we're in it. Keep going. Okay. And and nineteen ninety five, ten to eleven. So basically, quick fart noise. Keep going. Basically, when Thomas comes on stage uh, and does his first scene, it's like, wait a minute, was that Denzel? Because that's how good Denzel is. I was so blown away by what Thomas because I did UCB in improv. Yeah, okay. I did improv. I liked improv. I love. I loved improv. Okay, and I was doing stand up. You have to pick one at some point, and I, I picked stand up because that's what I, happened with me. I I, I did stand up and improv at the same time at the beginning, and felt so much more connected with improv and sketch than stand up that I went to improv and sketch. I did too, but it was it was too difficult. I, I could get on stage three times a week at that moment doing stand up right. and improv maybe once a month. That right. was the, that was the reason I chose stand up. Interesting. Yeah. Do you think how different do you think your career would have been, or you as a person would have been, if you chose? I mean, that's such a silly question because you would spend so much time in this community as opposed to this community. Right. So it would be wildly different. I could say outside of entertainment, um, though connected, but what th the self discovery I've been able to make and the understanding myself through stand up. Not that I couldn't have through improv, but no, I just but know. I understand this. what you're saying has really helped because me you're as a voicing person. exactly what you're going through in your head you're speaking as yourself not as characters and you're telling what's on your mind and what you're going through how personalized your experience has been so I, I totally understand that that you could tell your story better and with this the going home after doing very very poorly and i have to sit in it myself instead of laughing about it with peers well that's one of the things that made me push away from stand-up i remember i did i've done it probably 10 times at the beginning First of all, I have no stage presence at the beginning. You know, you're learning how to do anything. I, I hadn't done any comedy ever. And I was doing improv classes and stand-up. At and Upright I, Citizens Brigade? No, I did stand-up at Boston Comedy no, Club. No, the improv classes. Improv is Upright Citizens Brigade Theater. Although I did take classes at Second City, New York and UCB. And the Second City, New York classes just felt like it just didn't feel right. And then UCB classes felt like, ah, this is what I like. Uh -huh. And I got connected immediately and I became an intern so I can get free classes. What I made you like UCB more than Second City? The way that they taught was way better. In Second City, we spent the first like 30 minutes stretching. And I was like, what are we doing? And literally then, like, stretching or yes, like zips? Literally stretching. And then the, maybe zip zaps out. But in the other one, it was, let's get on stage. Let's do scenes. Yeah. Let's, you know, like. Um, oh, it's the funnest. It's, you get to be like a kid. The idea that I get to tour and play like real venues with my friends and just like make people laugh. We're being goofy and we're making people laugh. Uh, it's like, it's heaven. It's it's 100% heaven. So that stuff to me is really exciting. You're at the, there aren't that many improv or stand up. Mm. There's not that many opportunities, relatively speaking, as an improviser. You're kind of at the top of having a touring improv show. That's interesting. I think this is, can I say one thing? That's very kind of you. Um, this is one thing that I always thought. People who had never seen improv before, or when you talk to... God, I have a lot of questions to ask you as a stand-up about what your thoughts are on improv, but because you like improv, is different. But okay, so for stand-up... Oh, I already... I, 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 pardon the interruption. Go. Is a great show. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. But you're, you're talking about the way that they bat, like the, the shit when talking... When I came up at the beginning, uh -huh. stand-ups didn't really have respect for improv. And the other way around. No, I, that's not true. I used to go to improv shows all the time, because I was in both, all the time. And improv improvisers loved pretending they were stand-ups and making... Oh, scenes pretending you were stand-up is so funny. Yeah, it's great. So funny. But you're right, that is funny. But coming from making fun of the craft and the people. Oh, uh, yeah, but that's also, we'll make fun of everything. But like, that's... Sure. um. But I, I fucking loved stand-ups. But this is what I was going to say. What, let's say you're let's say you're in the middle of, of... Let's say you're not in LA, New York, or Chicago. 
Um, and there's no big improv scene there, right? I grew up from Cleveland with a little improv scene. Perfect. Okay, so there. And then you see someone goes and sees a class show. That is their only experience in seeing right. improv. And it's most class shows are terrible. I've been in a ton of class shows that are terrible. Mm-hmm. So they leave being like, well, improv is terrible. And they have no other place to see Because they've never seen there are no the, specials. the best doing it. Right, exactly. There are no specials. There are no improv groups that Agreed. come to big venues there yeah. and perform. So they have nothing to compare it to at all. Meanwhile, if I go see stand up in Cleveland and it bombs, I'm going to go then watch Eddie Murphy Raw. I'm going to watch Delirious. I'm going to watch Carlin. I'm going to watch Pryor. I'm going to watch people coming up. I can watch Aziz who's coming up. I can watch, you know, uh, Bill Burr. It's like there's so many specials. You're that saying run. coming up because you're referencing like when you were a kid. Uh, yeah, yeah, right, yeah. Right. Or like when, you know, come up in the comedy scene. But even as a kid, if I watched stand up, there were so many yeah. examples of awesome stand up. I could listen to Let's Get Small, which is. Blew my mind. You know what I mean? The only so it's examples like, of what improv was, was sketch. That's and correct. Which is shows. not improv. Not at all. So there, so a lot of people coming up just like, we're like, oh, we don't like. So So um, doing shows at Largo, Thomas and I, we had a, show, a group called Middleton Schwartz. When we would perform at Largo. That was a Netflix show. That that's correct. That's a Netflix show. We brought that to Largo and we were the first ever improvisers outside of Improvised Shakespeare Company to do like a show in that 270 person space, right? Uh-huh. And then then more improvisers would come there performing, which makes um, me and I'm assuming Thomas incredibly happy. And Thomas always wanted to tour. And I was like, ah, yeah, I don't really, and I still don't really have a huge desire to tour. But it's like, uh, oh, so we started touring. And now we're bringing improv to bigger venues that have never seen it before and introducing it. And we're very lucky. Both of us were on TV at the time. So people are probably coming in the door sometimes to be like, let's see what these funny guys yeah. are going to do. And then they start to like improv. And then the specials were a huge deal for us because there were, a, I did a special for Showtime for called House of Lies else. Live where Kristen was in it. Uh-huh. And it was, but it Josh wasn't Lawson like- Josh Lawson is a great improviser Josh too. Lawson is the fucking funniest he's guy in the world. so talented. He's so, and he's an incredible writer and he's gorgeous. Uh-huh. He is- so talented. Put up it a is, picture of Kano in the new Mortal Kombat. That's great. But then show a beautiful picture of him right next door so you can see what they look like. So um, I've actually so, referenced him in a podcast once. I cut to, I forgot the name of the show, but some improv show in Australia. Uh, thank God you're here. Yeah. He's amazing. Man. And he's so fucking funny. But go c- continue. Yeah. I, I, so so that improv was a huge, th- so I did the special for Showtime. And then um, I think TJ and Dave had a documentary out. Um, and then uh, Upright Citizens Brigade. Uh, TJ and Dave is a group called, uh, TJ and Dave is a Chicago group. They're like two old school improvisers called TJ Jagodowski and Dave Pesquese. They're like considered like, uh, you know, gods in the world okay. of improv, especially two person improv. They're very slow and patient in their scenes and they find incredible stuff. Thomas and I are more quicker and yeah. frenetic, uh, two different s- styles, but they are geniuses where do, where do people see them they can see them in chicago and but also there's there this, stuff online or i think there's this documentary streaming? online so there's very few very few and they're very hard to find so to get a special on netflix which by the way when thomas and i pitched everywhere every single place said no because they said well tell us what like if you pitch a stand-up special do you right. i apologize do you have one no. on so you pitch a stand-up special what is you it? have to kind of tell yeah. them what you're going to talk about so we would say oh we don't know the whole idea is we don't know they go yeah but like so is it possible to maybe like... It sounds like when uh, Seinfeld is talking about them pitching their show. Yeah, about nothing yeah. or whatever. And then they're like, well, what if you had like... One of the places goes, well, what if there's like a celebrity uh, in the crowd? And then you pull them up. I go, the whole show is, it's us. It's We're going to make nothing, whatever. And so um, so everybody passed. And then we did a show in LA and invited Netflix one more time. They saw it. And then they... Where was the show? At the Will Turn, maybe. And when you're doing that show, obviously you're doing a show you always want them to go well. Is there something that we knew that it was? We knew this is what happened. We sold out Carnegie Hall, so we played Carnegie Hall. We sold it out. (laughs) Then all of a sudden, people were like, "Oh, maybe some people watch us." So then our agent at the time says, "Like, we're going to set up a show in L.A. um, so these people can see you at a bigger venue. We'll try to convince them that way." So we knew going into it, this fuck, this is like. And what does that feel like to you? Because improv more than stand up in my opinion is it's it's if you're not present you go, go get fucked the the scarier like i don't really get Im- uh, nervous doing improv anymore but the times that i did were carnegie hall cuz it's i'm from new york mm-hmm. and it's like that's the place like i've never even been there as a kid it's like in, insane so that was incredible and then um taping the special because you work so hard for 20 years you know separately thomson and i worked together probably for a decade which is amazing but we'd been doing improv separately for 20 fucking years and never recorded one ever. Mm-hmm. Now we have the way that we set up the deal was we're going to shoot four specials, and out of and then we're going to take those three of the four specials and give you three specials. So we knew we meaning could, you could you could flub one one. But we within the show 
we can't edit out big chunks of the show. It's one show. Right. So like, unlike stand-up, if a big joke, if like a joke goes terrible, you can cut out five Plus, minutes. so many things are referenced. Exactly. So it's like, so it was so nerve wracking because it's like, all right, this is going to be us forever. The only time people ever <laughs> see us for, and the majority of the world will ever see us forever are these. And so I felt nervous there. And our first show was not amazing. It's the one that didn't make it. So then it was even more fucking pressure of now every show has to be at least good. Um, so yeah, so that, so doing the special is big because now we have that thing of like if you saw a shitty class show, you could show people this special or you could show and then all of a sudden people are doing improv in places. So now I tour with Ben Schwartz and friends and when we go there, it's like amazing. We're introducing improv to people or maybe they saw the special or yeah. maybe they just, you know, it's just, it's very special to me that we got to... Do you have dates of doing it again or are you done touring for right now? Um, I'm doing four more dates. I'm doing DC in July um boston in july and then i'm doing chicago in september and toronto in september and then there's a chance i might go to europe but i don't know yet i don't have the huge desire to same tour same that's why i'll go to like i like love chicago i'm gonna go to chicago yeah if it's a place you want to go to yeah yeah so it's like it's more like for that and then also i get to invite my friends i pay them we get to like have like a nice time so it's all, all that stuff is very appetizing but the older I get, the more I'm like, ah, I want to stay home and, you know, do my stuff here. Oh, yeah.